Now it's my absolute honor to introduce the 54th governor of Alabama and my good friend, Governor Kay Ivey. For those of you from our guest states who may not know Governor Ivey, she is a classroom teacher, educator, she's an economic developer, she's been our state's treasurer, our lieutenant governor. Governor Ivey has been on an incredible career path that has more than prepared her for this office that she now holds. On her watch, we have already set records, we've already broken records, and she's just getting started. She has set the tone for our workforce development success through the many initiatives set in motion by her Strong Start, Strong Finish program. Finally, she is a great friend to the growing automotive business in Alabama, I can assure you. Please welcome Governor Kay Ivey. Well, good morning, everyone. It's my honor to welcome you to Sweet Home Alabama. I certainly appreciate the opportunity to visit with you over the next couple of days and meet members of our valued automotive producers and partners. This event is like no other. And I hope everybody leaves here with fresh ideas and new partnerships. In the last 30 years, we've made a name for ourselves. The Alabama assembly plants operated by Mercedes, Honda, Hyundai, combined to produce around one million vehicles annually earning the state a number five ranking in the United States in the, for the production of cars and light trucks. The Mazda Toyota facility will add another 300,000 vehicles to that annual total. As early as 2024, Alabama could become the number two auto producing state based on industry industry projections prior to the pandemic. Honda, Hyundai, and Toyota typically combine to produce more than 1.5 million engines in Alabama each year with a capacity expansion set to boost that figure to over 1.9 million units annually. Toyota recently completed $288 million expansion at its Huntsville engine plant, which will push total investment there to $1.2 billion with a B. The investment will add two new engine lines and raise annual capacity to 900,000 engines. Alabama's four existing OEMs have invested around $11 billion in their Alabama operations, counting the ongoing projects. The Mazda Toyota joint venture plan will add another 2.3 billion to that total. Global automakers operating in Alabama have engaged in repeated expansion. In November 2019, Hyundai announced plans for 410 million dollar expansion at its Montgomery plant, adding some 200 jobs. Hyundai completed a $388 million expansion earlier in 2019 to, to build a facility to manufacture engine components. In September of 2019, Hyundai announced an additional $292 million investment at the facility. Mercedes announced plans in 2017 to invest $1 billion in its Alabama operation to launch electric vehicle production and establish a global logistics center. It started construction 
on a battery pack assembly facility in 2018. Honda, with $140 million in two projects, has announced substantial investments to add flexibility and improvements at its Alabama Productions facility. Alabama has proved to be a welcoming environment for global automotive manufacturing companies which are registering production milestones. Toyota, which broke ground in Alabama in 2001, has expanded its Huntsville engine factory multiple times and has produced over 7 million Alabama-made engines. Hyundai has produced over 6 million Alabama-built engines along with over 5 million vehicles. And in 2018, Mercedes marked the production of its 3 millionth Alabama-made vehicle and Honda recently produced its 5 millionth Alabama-made vehicle. Combined, automakers have assembled more than 13 million vehicles in Alabama since the first M-Class rolled down the line in 1997. Automakers have demonstrated that their Alabama-made vehicles have global appeal with motor vehicles being Alabama's number one export category. Exports of Alabama-made automobiles exceeded $5.5 billion with a B dollars in 2020, while exports of Alabama-made auto parts and products totaled $771 million. In all, state-built models were shipped to 83 countries in 2020. Alabama ranks number four among the states for vehicle exports. Truly, the economic impact of Alabama's auto industry is vast. However, in order to maintain these impressive statistics, Alabama must continue to invest in solid K through 12 education policies, workforce development initiatives, and our college and career ready programs. <clears throat> the last 20 months has exposed the challenges of our state across the board. Almost every sector from the private sector to state government, we have real challenges that need serious people to solve them. And COVID-19 exposed what we already knew. There is no substitute for student learning within a classroom. Our federal government has provided Alabama with more than $3 billion to address COVID-19 learning loss. And we need to do everything possible to direct those funds to ensure that our students receive the needed resources like broadband, tablets, after-school tutoring, summer enrichment programs, and quality teacher professional development, just to name a few things off the top of my head. Plain and simple, there is more money available today for education and workforce than ever before. If we don't seize the opportunity to really hone in on the priorities, shame on us. In the last four years, we have built upon our successful first class pre-K program with 42% of our state's four years, four year olds enrolled. This critical program will ensure that these students get a strong start that they need as they enter kindergarten ready to learn. Everyone here is well aware that the students participating in a high quality pre-K program are likely to be more proficient in our core subjects such as reading and math, less likely to need special education services, and less chronically absent in their educational path. These students are more successful later in life across the board and will be ready to choose a career path ready to go on day one on the job. It's now my focus to ensure we reach the Alabama established goal of 70% of 
of four-year-olds enrolled in what would be by the end of my second term in 2026. This goal would bring access to the program for families of every four-year-old child in Alabama. Over the past decade, Alabama has gone from reaching the national average of fourth grade reading on the National Assessment of Educational Pro Progress, or NAEP, as we know it, to 49th place in fourth grade reading. Another education item that has broad workforce impacts is the Alabama Literacy Act. This act was designed to ensure that all students in a fourth grade reading at grade level and through these rigorous new standards and supports, we will ensure that all students receive strong reading instruction. While the initial reading scores on our new reading assessment that is linked to the new law were lower than we hoped, it shouldn't come as a surprise. Raising standards will always have an adjustment period. Our neighbors in Mississippi have implemented this law and are seeing great gains in a very few short years. We must implement the Literacy Act to fidelity while providing professional learning in reading and mathematics for every educator and expand access to high quality after school and summer school programs for every child in Alabama. Every child must be able to read on grade level by the third grade period. If you cannot read, you cannot learn or do just about anything else. And once we have students ready to learn, we can offer more opportunities for young folks by offering them more work-based learning and expanding career-based apprenticeships. In 2019, the legislature and I partnered to create a $500 enhancement for the apprenticeship tax credit for hiring these in-school youth apprenticeships. And as such, we've seen the number of employers involved in this program rise exponentially. I'm also laser focused on working with the State Board of Education to incentivize schools to align their career and technical education courses to regional and statewide in-demand jobs. Also, that coursework must align with our partners in the community college system to ensure students receive building coursework and stackable credentials at each step. After all, y'all, the goal here is to get all highly trained, get you all highly trained employees and match a good paying job opportunity. I'm sure there's no one that no one knows the value of a strong education than many of you sitting in this room here this morning. Folks, there's much more I, ha I hope to tackle the next days ahead to offer more opportunities for our corporate partners and enhance the lives of our citizens. And by working together, we can do just that. So thank you again for allowing me to join you to kick off a great conference I welcome friends from all over the Southeast and look forward to spending time with as many of you as I can. Thank you, and may God continue to bless each of you and the great state of Alabama. Now I'd like to invite to the lectern a leader in the automotive industry, my fellow Alabamian, President and CEO of Mercedes-Benz U.S. International, Mr. Michael Goble. Welcome, Michael. Good morning also from my side. Thank you, Governor Ivan.